Prounce's Tavern is a national historic landmark, museum, and restaurant in New York City, situated at 54 Pearl Street at the corner of Broad Street. The location played a prominent role in pre-revolution, American Revolution and post-revolution history, serving as the headquarters for George Washington, a venue for peace negotiations with the British, and housing federal offices in the early republic. It has been owned by Sons of the Revolution in the state of New York, Inc., since 1904, which carried out a major conjectural reconstruction, and claim it is Manhattan's oldest surviving building. The museum interprets the building along with varied exhibitions of art and artifacts. The tavern is a tourist site and a part of the American Whiskey Trail and the New York Freedom Trail. Early History Pre-Revolution History New York Mayor Stephanus Van Cortland built his home in 1671 on the site, but retired to his manor on the Hudson River and gave the property in 1700 to his son-in-law, Etienne Stephen Delancey, a French Huguenot who had married Van Cortland's daughter, Anne. The Delancey family contended with the Livingston family for leadership of the province of New York. Delancey built the current building as a house in 1719. The small yellow bricks used in its construction were imported from the Dutch Republic and the sizable mansion ranked highly in the province for its quality. His heirs sold the building in 1762 to Samuel Frances who converted the home into the popular tavern, first named the Queen's Head. Before the Revolution, the building was one of the meeting places of the secret society, the Sons of Liberty. During the tea crisis caused by the British Parliament's passage of the Tea Act of 1765, the Patriots forced a British naval captain who tried to bring tea to New York to give a public apology at the building. The Patriots, disguised as American Indians, then dumped the ship's tea cargo into New York Harbor. In 1768, the New York Chamber of Commerce was founded by a meeting in the building. Revolution in August 1775 Americans took possession of cannons from the artillery battery at the southern point of Manhattan and fired on the HMS Asia. The British Royal Navy ship retaliated by firing a 32-gun broadside on the city, sending a cannonball through the roof of the building. When the war was all but won, the building was the site of British-American Board of Inquiry meetings which negotiated to ensure to American leaders that no American property be allowed to leave with British troops. Board members reviewed the evidence and testimonies that were given by freed slaves every Wednesday from April to November 1783, and British representatives were successful in ensuring that almost all of the loyalist blacks of New York maintained their liberty and could be evacuated with the redcoats when they left if so desired. Washington's farewell to his offices after British troops evacuated New York on NOV. 25th, the tavern hosted a week later an elaborate turtle feast dinner on December 4, 1783, in the building's long room for U.S. Gen. George Washington where he bade farewell to his officers of the Continental Army by saying, W.I.T.H. a heart full of love and gratitude, I now take leave of you. I most devoutly wish that your latter days may be as prosperous and happy as your former ones have been glorious and honorable, as he later asked to take each one of his officers by the hand for a personal word. Post-revolution in January 1785, New York City became the seat of the Confederation Congress. The nation's central government under the Articles of Confederation and Perpetual Union, the Departments of Foreign Affairs, Finance and War had their offices at France's Tavern. With the ratification of the United States Constitution in March 1789, the Confederation Congress's departments became federal departments, and New York City became the first official national capital. The inauguration of George Washington as first President of the United States took place in April 1789. Under the July 1789 Residence Act, Congress moved the national capital to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for a 10-year period. 
while the permanent national capital was under construction in what is now Washington, D.C. The federal departments vacated their offices in the building and moved to Philadelphia in 1790, 19th and 20th centuries. The building operated throughout much of the 19th century, but suffered several serious fires beginning in 1832. Having been rebuilt several times, the structure's appearance was changed to the extent that the original building design is not known. The building was owned by Malvina Keteltis in the early 1800s. Ernst Buermeyer and his family leased part of the property in 1845 and ran a hotel called the Broad Street House at this location until 1860. After a disastrous fire in 1852, two stories were added, making the tavern a total of five stories high. In 1890, the tap room was lowered to street level and the first floor exterior was remodeled, and its original timbers sold as souvenirs. Restoration in 1900, the tavern was slated for demolition by its owners, who wanted to use the land for a parking lot. A number of organizations, most notably the Daughters of the American Revolution, worked to preserve it, and convinced New York state government leaders to use their power of eminent domain and designate the building as a park. The temporary designation was later rescinded when the property was acquired in 1904 by the Sons of the Revolution in the state of New York, Inc., primarily with funds wheeled by Frederick Samuel Toolmadge, the grandson of Benjamin Toolmadge, George Washington's chief of intelligence during the Revolution. An extensive reconstruction was completed in 1907 under the supervision of early historic preservation architect William Merceru. Guidebook of the era called the Tavern, the most famous building in New York. Historian Randall Gabriellen wrote in 2000 that Merceru claimed his remodeling of France's tavern was faithful to the original, but the design was controversial in his time. There was no argument over removing the upper stories, which were known to have been added during the building's 19th century commercial use, but adding the hipped roof was questioned. He used the Phillips Manor House in Yonkers, New York as a style guide and claimed to follow the roof line of the original, as found during construction, traced on the bricks of an adjoining building. Architects Norval White and Elliot Wilensky wrote in 2000 that the building was a highly conjectural reconstruction, not a restoration, based on typical buildings of the period, parts of remaining walls and a lot of guesswork. The building was declared a landmark in 1965 by New York City Landmarks Preservation Commission, and the building's block bounded by Pearl Street, Water Street, Broad Street and Coenties Slip was included on November 14, 1978. The building's block was included on April 28, 1977 on the National Register of Historic Places by National Park Service and the building was included on March 6, 2008. Bombing A bomb planted in the tavern exploded on January 24, 1975, killing four people and injuring more than 50 others. The Puerto Rican extremist nationalist group Fuerzas Armadas de Liberación Nacional Puerto Ricana which had executed other bomb incidents in New York in the 70s, claimed responsibility. No one had been prosecuted for the bombing as of April 17, 2013. Among the victims who died was a young banker, Frank Connor, who had worked his way up over 15 years from Clark to assistant vice president at Morgan Guarantee Trust. Connor left behind his wife and two sons. A second New York worker was Harold H. Sherburn, whose career on Wall Street spanned four decades. Two executives, James Gesork of Wilmington, Delaware, and Alejandro Berger, who worked for a Philadelphia-based chemical company, had traveled to New York for business meetings. Sherburn, Connor, and Berger died at the scene. Gazork died later at the hospital. In a note police found in a phone booth nearby, the FALN wrote, 
we take full responsibility for the especially detonated bomb that exploded today at France's tavern. With reactionary corporate executives inside, the note explained that the bomb, roughly 10 pounds of dynamite that had been crammed into an attaché case and slipped into the tavern's entrance hallway, was retaliation for the CIA-ordered bomb that killed three and injured 11 in a restaurant in Mayaguez. Puerto Rico two weeks earlier. As of December 2012, update, a memorial plaque with some victims' names is hung in the tavern's large dining room. Recent uses. Since 1907, the France's Tavern Museum on the second and third floors has helped to interpret the France's Tavern and the collection of artifacts that it holds. The museum comprises nine galleries. The John Ward Dunsmore Collection of Painted Scenes of the American Revolution, the Elizabeth and Stanley D. Forrest Scott Gallery of Portraits of George Washington, The Long Room, the site of General George Washington's famous farewell dinner, The Clinton Room, a recreation of a Federalist-style dining room, the McEntee Gallery, depicting the history of the Sons of the Revolution, the Davis Education Center, and a number of other galleries and spaces used for periodic exhibitions. In 2014, for example, the museum exhibited 27 maps from the 1700s and 1800s, including a never-before-seen map from 1804 depicting the United States as postal routes. The building served as the location of the General Society, Sons of the Revolution Office until 2002, when the General Society moved to its current location of National Headquarters at Independence, Missouri. The museum maintains several galleries of art and artifacts about the Revolution including the McKenty, Sons of the Revolution, gallery that displays much of the history of the Society. Gallery National Register of Historic Places Marker of U.S. Department of the Interior George Clinton Room at the France's Tavern Museum Dining Room at France's Tavern Plaques at France's Tavern France's Tavern Sign The Portrait of Samuel Francis at the France's Tavern Museum